Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. What's that time of year again? Change of season, but before we get there, school starting for many. If not, if it hasn't started, it will be starting in, in another couple of days. And right. with that brings some challenges in, in all different ways on parents, on students. We're going to dig into that. And she helps people of all different ages navigate all different challenges, even school. And she's an amazing psychologist. Dr. Gloria Vanderhorst is back with us. Welcome. School is in session. School is in session or just about to be in session. So everyone is gearing up for school. Well, it's also in session here because every time we have you on, we learn a lot. So, well, that's great. That's a very nice compliment. Thank you. And, and let's let's reverse engineer it because I have lots of friends it's around that age that are becoming empty nesters mm-hmm. or have. Right. They literally this past weekend dropped, dropped their kids off at school or going back to school, but you know, number of empty nesters. Uh, and uh, it's been challenging. Like, h- how do you how do you deal with that if you're a parent, uh, maybe even a single parent, and now mm-hmm. that person that's been in your house all that time is gone? That's a great question. And I have some clients who have just accomplished that, right? Dropping their kids off at school for the very first time. And I have some adolescents who have just headed off to college for the first time and I've been checking in with them kind of how's the transition what Mm. happened at the drop off and you know colleges now kind of roll drop offs pretty quickly they've gotten smart about it not everybody comes at you know nine in the morning on the first day they have these rolling processes so the job is just to get your kid in the room (laughs) as fast as possible and it then is. Take Get out. Off. <laughs> it's so true. You know, I, I had somebody I talked to and she was running late this past weekend and it was a, you know, one fifteen, and you're out of there. That's right. Not That's even right. barely time for your parent to help set up your, <laughs> your, your room. Right. They wow. get to, to unpack things and take boxes away, but they have to be very efficient about it. But you know, you ask the question of, okay, so what happens, particularly if this is your only child, and you've just dropped your only child off at college. And I do have a friend who just experienced that. And and truly, it's sad. You really miss this person who's been in your life and in your house, you know, for years now. And sometimes you forget that you've just dropped them off at school, right? So you'll find yourself kind of calling their name. (laughs) Dinner's ready. (laughs) I honestly have somebody um, that did just this first Mm -hmm. time. uh, And it was in like three states away. Mm -hmm. And I'm due to check back with her uh, by text. Uh I I honestly don't know what to say. You know, I, I don't, you know... So in, in, in that situation, I always think, you know, do a tell me, all right? <laughs> tell me what you're experiencing. Tell me how it went. True. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me yeah. what you're feeling. And, you know, if you can do a tell me, because questions are threatening. We've kind of referred to that before. So the tell me is an invitation. Uh, I want to hear what's happening for you. It says anything goes. You don't have to be specific. You don't have to focus in one particular place. You can you can feel free to disclose whatever you want to disclose or not disclose. It's an open invitation that's just saying, I care about you. I know that you've just had an important experience and I care about you. Mm. I really just want to be present. For you i'm i'm a big fan of the word feel or feelings mm-hmm. so you know tell me how you're feeling yep you know absolutely yeah and and absolutely we all have feelings so we can verbalize it you know sometimes you know i i'm guilty of this how's it going question mark mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. it's a little it can be a little impersonal depends on you know right. the, the situation um i think even your phone can auto populate how's it going <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, just press one button and it just sends it. That's right. Um, but That's you know, right. how are you feeling is just you know a few layers more personal. Um, what's your what's your advice for somebody who's in that situation that has just dropped somebody off, you know, their their child? Um, yeah, and feeling maybe some isolation, feeling alone. How does that look? I, and I, what I do would, you suggest? I would say do not head home right away. Hmm. So you have just experienced an important emotional event in your life. All right. This will be the only time that this event happens. Hmm. This is even if you have 10 children, each one is different. All right. So this is happening with this particular child. And I would say to people, you know, find a park, um, mm. go to Starbucks, um, sit still in your car, take a moment to really process what am I feeling? What am I experiencing? And look at you the needs that you have. All right. You may need to take a walk. Right, you may need to get out a piece of paper and just start journaling what you're experiencing. Hmm. Right, you may need to just call a friend. There are a variety of things, but my advice if you've dropped your child off at college is do not hit the road right away because you are emotionally impacted in some way, right? Maybe you're glad to get rid of this kid, right? Maybe this kid has been difficult and you know you wanted college to come sooner and now it's happened, all right? Or maybe this is you know a kid that you just have a great bond with and you're really going to miss and so you know you're experiencing grief whether you admit it to yourself mm. or not but do not put yourself on the highway that's just a invitation for disaster so take some time so interesting looking at that because the person i was referring to has a love-hate relationship with her kid mm -hmm. <laughs> yep they happen complains about him but then you know is sad like very sad and dropping him off mm -hmm. and uh you know great advice not heading back into your normal routine right away even if it is in another state right uh, maybe even to plan to do something else you know i'm i'm gonna take an extra right. day i'm gonna stay right. here and i'm gonna right. you know i'm gonna have a spa day you know right. I, i'm gonna explore look around right this new area that i'm in um right. so yeah yeah that's uh and even if even if you got to head back right away, change your routine, do something different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can always take a break before you take off. You don't have to put all the suitcases in the car and immediately head for the interstate. Yeah. All right. There are loads of places that you can go get something to eat, find Love a it. park, go for a walk in a neighborhood. Uh, just give yourself an opportunity to reset and to digest this experience. Whether you're close to your child or distant from your child, it's a powerful experience to separate and move a child out of your orb, right? Mm -hmm. Out of your influence and send them off to college. It's a powerful experience. Give it the respect that it really needs. And I look at it this way, Gloria, it's your life is changing. Mm -hmm. So change it, mm -hmm. change the routine, do something right. different, or maybe look at this as an opportunity to do maybe something different with your life. And some of that time that you would have focused on um, your child, maybe it goes into, well, you know what, I'm going back into working out. I'm going to go volunteer, whatever it might be. Right. Or, you know, I can page back to my own experience. So I wasn't the last one to leave home for college, but when the last one did leave, my parents put their house on the market immediately. <laughs> it was like, you know, we're getting out of this place and moving someplace else that 
downsizing almost immediately. Yeah, that it's it's actually pretty funny because you brought back a memory. I I went to just a community college. Actually, full disclosure, dropped out because I was already doing my chosen career. I was uh -huh. in you know I was at the big station, and that's what I wanted to do. Um, but shortly after I left the nest and uh -huh. uh, and got married, um, right away my mom got air conditioning. All those. <laughs> All those years of sweating in my room with the box fan in the window. Right. And then she gets air conditioning. Central air. Central air. Yeah. Uh, and good for her. And good for her. That was, yeah, you know, sure. Yeah. That's that was, funny. Well, now she could afford it because she doesn't have to feed you. No, that was a treat. That was a treat. So let's now let's go to, let's say, middle school and high school. And mm -hmm. I hear this a lot, very close to this, where there's a lot of challenges nowadays with teens uh, wow. yeah, bullying and with the, oh my gosh, the list goes on and on and on. Right. Um, what if you have a child that doesn't want to go to school that just for whatever reason, whether it's anxiety, whether there's fear of bullying, um, okay. whatever the answer is, how okay. do you navigate through something like that? That's a really good question. And you, it happens more often than you would imagine. Oh, I get it. Right. Um, and, and there are a variety of reasons that a child wouldn't want to go to school, particularly in the current environment. Yes. Right. We walk through metal detectors and some fancy ones recently with artificial intelligence that can identify whether you have any kind of a weapon on you or not. Uh, so it isn't just a metal detector, right? If you've got one of these plastic guns that you've made in at home, it can pick that up too, is the way that I understand it. Mm. And so, you know, there's the emotional reason that I'm uncomfortable, it's dangerous, there are other emotional reasons. It's too big, right? It's too complicated. Um, I don't fit. I don't feel like I am welcome or, or I belong or it's sure. difficult, right? So I have dyslexia and it's hard for me to keep up with all of those things or I have difficulty in math and I get embarrassed yeah. When I get called on in class and I don't know the answer, or I don't know what to say. So, or maybe I just have some kind of physical or mental disorder that makes it difficult for me to actually access the education in that building. Um, and so there are a variety of reasons that students will have difficulty going back to school and every school system has a process to help those children. So you access that process as quickly as you can so that your child gets the resources. They can be homeschooled. They can have teachers come to the house. This can be done online. Well, every, every municipality, every district is different. Um, as I understand it in these parts, there's no homeschooling. Really? The only homeschooling is if uh, a child has a physical challenge that's temporary, broke a leg. Uh -huh. So then, you know, they will sign off on that six weeks. It, it's homeschooling. Mm -hmm. There's no homeschooling uh, outside of that. Outside of, let me just uh, clarify mm -hmm. that. Unless you take your child legally out of school, Draw them from school. Completely withdraw them. Mm -hmm. And then you pay for it. Uh -huh. You pay for it. And that's how, yeah. you know, essentially it is around in these parts. Now, maybe it is different if your child has severe issues, but for the stuff that we're talking about, it seems just like today's challenges, um, post COVID and all of right. that. And just, you know, all the things that you identified so uh, real and impactful where you know a child may be pretty sharp but they may have they may be things. anxious you no know? they I was may just going to say it completely right. uncomfortable or developmentally right they might be kind of in a younger phase 
Yeah. And so they feel out of sync with their peers. And, yeah. you know, our educational system has been really slammed by COVID. COVID has put children back year, yeah. two years in terms of competence. So we're in this catch up mode, but maybe it's also time for us to look at the educational system Agreed. and decide that what we do to educate our children honestly is not working that well. Agreed. Right? It's, it's really not working that well. So this could be an opportunity for those who are concerned about education to say, let's just re-examine the system that we use, all right? I, With, there's, there's probably no other place where you go to work, right? And there are 40 kids, 40 adults in the room that you're working in, right? Mm-hmm. Right. But but They're let us sitting in little chairs. <laughs> and, and 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 one thing not to be forgotten, when it's your job, you have a choice. I'm gonna go to that job. I'm gonna quit that job. I'm gonna go to that job. Right. This is your school. This is mm -hmm. you're legally required to go. Right. So now yep. you're 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 putting a you know a round peg square hole forcing that might not be the right fit right. for a student for whatever the challenges right. are that they have. Uh, I totally agree with you. I think it needs to be analyzed. And fortunately, some schools are now getting even substance abuse counselors where they didn't okay. have that previously. Uh, I think they're behind the eight ball on that, at least the ones that I'm aware of, but thankfully it's happening because substance abuse, vaping has been going on for years, years. Okay for a very long time. The other thing that I think we could take advantage of, and I've just uh, read some things recently, is that there's a real need in the trade community mm. to feed adolescents into yeah. different types of trades where they can be successful, they can make a good income, they mm -hmm. can buy a house. Yeah. Right. And the home ownership is actually the key to success in the United States. If you can't own a home, you're going to struggle to support yourself. So we could do much more about educating kids about trades starting at the elementary school level just to know that they exist and what they do and how you can kind of get trained in all of those things we need trades people absolutely and i think that all went away in recent years because schools are continually preparing students for exams mm -hmm. gotta get you ready for exam gotta get you ready gotta get you ready what if you don't want to go to college, right? What if that's not on your radar? Mm -hmm. And it used to be where trades were so much more important in school. We're right. going to need, as far as I can see, we're going to need plumbers for a really <laughs> long time. A <laughs> long time. <laughs> and you know, if you start a you know solid plumbing company, you could be making uh, some pretty good money. There is you your, can make some right? very good money in trades. You really can. Absolutely. Even even electricians. Now, you know, things have changed, but there's always going to be a need. There's going to be things breaking mm -hmm. down electrically, mm -hmm. things that don't exist so much. Appliance repair. Unfortunately, a lot of times when the appliance is bad after a number of years, it goes in the garbage, get a new That's one. Right. Um, but yeah, trades are important. And I don't believe it's it's uh, it's encouraged like it it used to be. Uh, I think there's a movement afoot, all right, to bring that information basically down into the elementary school mm. level yeah. uh, and introduce the variety of different trades that exist out there that you could aim for and really end up having a very nice life. Even the classes that are offered, from, from my view, in high school, uh, there are some whatever used to be home economics, I forget what the, it's called. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, got a, it's got a PC name now. Um, <laughs> you know, that's great. Um, 
video, digital production, things like that, that's offered. Um, but I also feel they, they fall short in things like uh, exposing students to energy, energy mm -hmm. healing, those mm -hmm. modalities. Um, right. the, and the schools oh, that yeah. do, are, are those classes are filled up. Yes. They're filled up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we could do a much better job yeah. of offering a variety, a full range of education to our children. Uh, but I think we have, we have to start that in the elementary school level, just to let these kids know what does exist at the adult level. For sure. What we about start dreaming then? Yeah, you know, the the elementary school level. Uh, yeah, we went to all the, we went to college. Now we're going mm -hmm. back to the elementary school. Uh, what about if it's at the beginning, and you, your child suffers from things like separation anxiety, uh, anxiety in general? I know I did. You know, I was uh -huh. I was I was attached to my mother's leg when she was dropping me off at kindergarten. Never forget it. <laughs> well, I have a good kindergarten story for you from. One of my clients, this little boy, had a nickname at home, right? Everybody called him Butch. And mother took him to school. The school was in walking distance, all right? And so mother is signing him up, right? And the teacher asks, you know, what's your son's name? And she says, his name is Stephen. He'd never heard it before. He had no idea that his name was Stephen. He was Butch, right? Wow. And so this huge wave of panic rolls over this kindergartner and imagines she's brought me here to dump me. Can you imagine the wow. emotional experience of being introduced to school? And, and we think that maybe single experiences don't have much of a lasting effect trust me oh traumatic experiences have a lasting effect oh especially when you're a child it especially just especially when you're a you young child so fresh and by the way you must be psychic gloria because uh my legal name is not steve <laughs> <laughs> not even kidding um <laughs> And you know, I do recall getting picked on from time to time with that name. There were some advantages to it. I don't need to get into it, but uh -huh. uh, I just changed my name when I got into broadcasting because I went from one station, a small one, I was in my mm -hmm. teens to a large one. And it looked like they were taking staff from that station. So they said, can you change your name? I'm like, I don't, of course, <laughs> whatever you need me to do. Um, but yeah, you think about those situations where, you know, right. that you have a child uh, their, their identity is different, right? School for the first time. Um, there, these are traumas, you know, these we traumas, we've hit some of this stuff before, but, mm -hmm. uh, even getting bullied, you're a six-year-old, you get bullied sure. that, that can change your life forever. It can. And we don't give enough weight or credit to the life experiences of children in the elementary grades we think that they'll just kind of recover or that they're so young that it's not important or impactful sure. but the truth of the matter is they're more emotionally aware and in touch than older children are so it has a much bigger impact but we don't process that with them we need to do a better job of processing emotional impacts uh, totally. Or at least at the very, very least recognizing it. Um, mm -hmm. And then the healing process when you're, when your child gets to be 14 and now they have some issues and you're like, well, how, where did that go wrong? Well, mm -hmm. if you rewound and I'm not saying, I'm not saying we're bad parents. We just didn't no. know any better. So those funny, funny little things that, you know, little Butch used to tease him, even as, mm -hmm. you know, his dad just make, you know, right. not make fun, but just like goof off a little bit. Right. Just, just in fun. It could have mm -hmm. made an impression and right. still dealing with that. Um, we're out of time. Yep, we are. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> it was fun. Very interesting. And uh, I find that we're on the same page in, in terms of the, the education system. And I have kids in school, so I see right. it. I'm experiencing it firsthand. Mm -hmm. Again, every district is different around the country. Uh, but if anybody 
is is dealing with some challenges with school, their teens, uh, even if you're an adult and you're in an empty nester and having some challenges. Your website is pretty simple. It's 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 your name, right, Gloria? Well, it's www.drvanderhorst.com. Very simple. Yep. And free consult you offer as well, right? Yes. Yeah, with the whole school thing, I'm I'm starting to get anxiety because I've got less than uh, I've got eight days, and I still have to go back to school shopping, nails, uh, uh, right. <laughs> lashes. <laughs> Gotta get all that. not for me, obviously, but right, uh, no, uh, that's that's to on get, the list to get everything ready and make sure that it's all organized and that you haven't forgotten anything, right? And everybody's happy. And everybody's <laughs> and happy. That. Gloria, right. always great having you on. Really appreciate you. Thank you. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network.